I don't know if, if this weird, sorry, if this weird floating head is much more professional than having my bike in the background. Um, but in this video, I don't. Um, in this video, I'd I'd like to talk a little. Hmm. In this video, I. I'd like to talk a little about what happens to the tangent if you mess around with it. Basically, the tangent equivalent of a sinusoidal function. And when I say a little, I do mean a little. I mean, we spent a full week on sinusoidal functions. Okay, I can't, uh, give me a second. We spent a full week on sinusoidal functions. We cannot spend another week on tangents and cotangents or another week on secants and cosecants. So I'm going to go into this much less in depth than the book does. I just want you to get a general idea of what happens. And fortunately, the tangent behaves basically the same as the sine or the cosine. Like here's the sine of x and here's the tangent of x. Let's see what happens if we put a number in front of the sign or a number in front of the tangent. Well, when we're working with the sign, we have a formal name for this number. It gives us the amplitude. But what happens is that as A increases, the sign gets stretched vertically. And as A goes towards zero, the sign gets compressed vertically. And the, um, with the tangent, we don't have a special name for this anymore. It's not called the amplitude. But the same thing happens. A increases, and just like the sign gets stretched, the tangent gets stretched. A decreases, and just like the sine gets smushed, the tangent gets smushed. And we saw what happens if we have a B in front of the X, This B changes the period of the sign. It stretches it horizontally, or it compresses it horizontally. It goes up, the curve gets smushed horizontally. It goes down, the curve gets stretched out horizontally. So, what about the tangent? Well, precisely the same thing. As B increases, you see these graphs get smushed together. The period is decreasing. If B gets close to zero, you see these curves are pulled apart. The period is increasing. So we see the same kind of thing with the tangent. Once again, 
that we see with the sign. With the sign, if we put the minus C here, then that C moves the graph of the sign horizontally. The tangent, if we put a minus C here, well, guess what? That C causes the tangent curve to move horizontally. Finally, with the sign, if we put a plus D there, that D causes the sine graph to move up and down vertically. And I'm afraid there's no extra credit in telling me ahead of time what's going to happen to the tangent when I put the D there. It's exactly the same thing. It moves up and down vertically. So the sort of tangent equivalent of the sinusoidal function A times the tangent of Bx minus C plus D. All of these parameters act the same way they act with the sine. This A stretches or smushes the graph um, vertically. This B smushes or stretches the graph horizontally. This C moves the graph horizontally. This D moves the graph vertically.